please join me now in our responsive call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord with your whole heart. Sing out your praise and thanksgiving. Let us give thanks for God's steadfast love and faithfulness. Whenever we call, God answers. The Lord strengthens every soul. Let us sing of the ways of the Lord, for God's glory is great and everlasting. you're going to be learning about downstairs in church skill comes from uh, the book of Hosea. Hosea um, was a man that God chose to be his voice to the people. And the people weren't being so good. They weren't, they weren't acting righteously. They were acting wrongously. <laughs> that was a joke. And so God um, used our friend Hosea to try to convince the people that, um, that God will never forget them and that we should always remember that God loves us. Um, it's kind of like, oh, you know how our moms and dads and the grown-ups that take care of us, you know, they, they love us very much. But sometimes we don't always, we're not always a good listener, are we? Sometimes we don't make good choices. But does that mean the grown-ups who take care of you stop loving you? No, they don't. Just like God never stops loving us. And so this made me think of some five important words we learned at VBS a few weeks ago. So I thought, I thought I'd bring back those five important words that maybe even if we remember one of them during those times that we're not being such a good listener, uh, that could maybe help us in our relationship, not only with the grown-ups who care for us, but your relationship with God as well. So um, it starts off with a term that goes like this. Go beyond with, who remembers one of those words? Faith. Faith was the first word. Go beyond with faith. We should have faith. What's another word for faith that starts with B? B, that's, that's coming up. Believe. When we have faith, we believe that God will always be with us. He will never forsake or leave us. We believe that God will protect us. So that's word number one you might think of during your week. Word number two, Joel kind of gave it away. We should be bold right if you recall it's bold what's another word for bold it also starts with a b brave we want to try and be bold or brave because sometimes doing the right thing is not always the easy thing to do 
So we want to remember bold. And another word we learned, we should be, when should we choose kindness? Yes. Always. Yes, when, there's, when we could be anything in the world. I saw this sign. When we could choose to be anything in the world, choose kindness. Yes. Okay. We're going to put that together, and Andy will help us, okay? All right. And the next word that's uh, in my bag here, we should say when. <laughs> Maybe when someone gives us something, when someone helps us. When something good happens, when something bad happens, when something good happens in our lives. God. We can say thank you to God for all the good things that happen in our life, even the simple things every day, like having clothes, enough food, air conditioning. <laughs> okay, I've got one more word in here. I've got one more word in here. We should have Hope. Who gives us hope? Who gives us hope? You're pointing upward. Yes. Can you say it out loud? We can't hear your fingers. God and his son, Jesus Christ, gives us hope. God sent his son, Jesus, to earth to take away all of the sin that we have on our heart. He took it and he defeated it for us. And that gives us hope hope every day. Should we keep it a secret, this hope, or should we share it with everyone we meet? Who thinks? <laughs> Who thinks they know? What should we do with this hope, this wonderful thing? What should we do? Share it. We want to share this hope with everyone we meet. So last night I was practicing with Luke, and Luke said, Mom, you know, um, I have another word. Maybe we should take one of those words away and add my word. I was like, well, these five words are really important. I don't know if I want to take any of them away. But then he, I said, well, what was the word you want to put in there? And what was that word, Luke? <laughs> he forgot. He forgot. Love. And I said, that's an awesome word, because you know what? Faith and boldness and kindness and hope and there was another one. Thankfulness. Those are all ways to show how we love the grown-ups who care for us and to show God how much we care for him. <laughs> yes, thank you. So um, there was this word, this sentence really, right? Go beyond with God. That was our theme during Vacation Bible School. Do you remember that? Go beyond with God. Let's see if we could turn around and show everyone um, how we can do that using our sign language to say our five words. Are we ready? If you remember it, you can turn around and show our friends. If you're not sure, you can face me and I'll, and I'll help remind you. So, friends of Christ, we are not just going to practice faith and boldness and hope and kindness and thankfulness inside this church, but we're going to go beyond the walls of this church and practice these things to keep our relationship good with our grown-ups and our Lord. Ready? So we are going to go beyond with faithfulness, boldness. Kindness, thankfulness, and hope. Hope. Let us say a prayer before we leave for church school together, boys and girls. And everyone. <laughs> Big boys and girls. Okay. Loving God, help us be open so we may follow your will. Everybody show me your binoculars. Give us eyes to see you. Put your hands around your ears. Give us ears to hear you. Put your hands up on your head. Give us open minds that we may understand you. Put your hands over your heart. 
Give us an open heart to love you. And put your hands out like this. Give us open hands to serve you. Amen. You may dismiss to church school now. pray. God of love and power, thank you for taking us by the hand and guiding us through our life struggles. Thank you for the gift of the wisdom you continue to offer us through your still speaking voice. As your word is read, help us to hear anew the good news of your abiding presence with us. Strengthen us to follow faithfully in the way of your son Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Uh, my name is Haley Hudler, and I am a recent graduate of Heidelberg University, and soon I'll be going off to call a seminary in Chicago. And I'm very excited to share my message with you this morning. 
So last week, Pastor Jen used the story of Jonah to explain the complex task of forgiveness. She spoke on how Jonah was having a hard time accepting that God forgave the Ninevite people because he believed they weren't worthy of God's forgiveness. From the book of Jonah, we learned that we cannot determine the actions of others, and especially the actions of God. God will forgive the people we are stubborn to. The grace and mercy given to us from God is abundant and overflowing. It reaches you and me and even the Ninevite people. The color in our rainbow for this week is indigo. And I want to dive more into what the Bible says about forgiveness and how we bring that truth into our lives. When we are asked to find forgiveness in the Bible, the first thing someone may think of is 70 times 7 a reference when Jesus was giving instruction to his disciples that they must forgive without bound. Next thing you may think of is the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Everyone is sure that the Bible is full of messages about forgiveness, but when it comes down to it, few people can identify exactly what the text means. My view on all of this is forgiveness is hard on both sides. It is hard for the person who is asking for forgiveness because sometimes pride gets in our way or we don't believe we did anything wrong in the first place. So it takes courage to ask, ask for forgiveness from others and God. Then vice versa, when we were abused or mistreated by someone and they turn to us and ask for forgiveness, do we do it? Are they worthy? Do I really want to forgive? It's not an overnight process and it takes time. Forgiveness is tricky because we think it has to be a two-way street between both parties, um, both parties to be in agreement with each other, but instead, Forgiveness is an individual process. I want to break this down into two sections, receiving and giving. Let's talk about receiving forgiveness first, specifically receiving forgiveness from God. In the Lord's Prayer, we say, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I want to emphasize the word our. When we say this line, we are claiming that we did it. Whether that be a sin or a misdeed, we are accepting we crossed over the line and are guilty of our thoughts or our actions. That is step one, accepting you are wrong. Raise your hand if at any point in your life you had a hard time saying the three words, I am wrong. I know I have. It is natural for humans to not want to feel guilty, but we are not built that way. But Jesus makes it clear that repentance is required for receiving forgiveness. Repentance is defined as reviewing one's actions and feeling sorrow for past wrongs, having sincere regret or remorse. If you do not feel bad for what you did or do not recognize yourself as wrong, then how could you receive forgiveness from God or from anyone? We slip up and make hurtful decisions, and we need to own up to that, the good and the bad parts of us. The second step to receiving forgiveness is asking for it. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. If you genuinely want forgiveness from God, it will be done. Like our reader Jim said, God is sheer mercy and grace, not easily angered, who is rich in love, who doesn't endlessly nag and scold, nor hold grudges forever. The Lord doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, nor pay us back in full for our wrongs. Sometimes it may be hard to believe that God has forgiven us because there's nothing tangible that shows you it's true. But the Lord gives us a new day to start all over. You are breathing. Each inhale and exhale is reassurance. 
you get to see the sunrise and set. We get to live another day on this good earth. Now, to speak on section two, giving forgiveness. Now, who has a hard time forgiving others? It is very easy to hold on to the pain that others give to us. What exactly makes it so hard to forgive and let go? I watched a TED talk from Sarah Montana. She went through a tragic event where her mother and brother were murdered. For eight years after, she battled anger, grief, and trauma, but never truly forgave the murderer. She went online to find steps on how to forgive effectively. She found there are 62 passages in the Bible that mention forgiveness, but none of them tell you how to do it. One of the most celebrated forgiveness texts is Jesus' prayer on the cross. He says, Lord, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. This is often remembered as the quintessential moment of unconditional Christian forgiveness, and it's held up as a model for what believers should do in practice. Often, pastoral caregivers present victims of violence with this verse to demonstrate the perfect Christian response to persecution and wrongdoing. This becomes especially problematic when victims, especially of domestic violence, are pressured to reconcile quickly and unconditionally with their abusers based on an unrealistic view of Christian forgiveness. Society has told us to forgive for all the wrong reasons. One, being be, one, because we think it makes you a good person. It's an easy mistake to make, right? If forgiveness is good, a good person should forgive right away. But there is no timeline for forgiveness. The second wrong reason is we feel pressured to forgive from everyone, but in reality, they want you to forgive quickly so they can feel more comfortable, so they can move on. That's a crappy reason to do anything. The last misinformed reason to forgive quickly is we think it's a shortcut to healing. Forgiving can't make you a good person, not all in itself, because that's not what it's intended to do. That's not what it's designed to do. It's designed to set you free. In Sarah Montana's words, when you say, I forgive you, what you're really saying is, I know what you did, it's not okay, but I recognize that you are more than that. I don't want to hold us captive of this thing anymore. I can heal myself, and I don't need anything from you. These sentences were specific to her situation, but can be adaptive and used fluidly when we're having trouble coming up with the right words to say when forgiving someone. Sarah was able to forgive the murderer by seeing them pass their wrongs, or their wrong actions, and knew that sin did not define them for the rest of their life. And just as God sees us, people who are not defined by the sins we make, but a whole being that is worth much more. Forgiveness does not happen overnight. It takes a lot of strength to give forgiveness and also to receive it. But in time, you'll find that it sets you free. Remember when I said earlier that forgiveness is misconstrued as a two-way street that both parties need to be on the same page? Well, I still believe in that statement and want to clarify that whole and entire forgiveness is a two-way process for an individual not a two-way street shared by both parties. Sometimes the person you need to forgive the most is yourself. God loves you eternally and forgives you always. As long as you do two things, admit that you're wrong, AKA the big Bible word, repentance, and are wanting and willing to receive forgiveness from God and your community. That is where we get stuck in a rut after a lot of us have accepted the fact that we made a mistake or hurt another, we wallow in that hurt and repent to a point where it makes us immobile. Self-forgiveness. This is where God saves us, and forgiveness is transformative. 
we allow ourselves to feel the love of God that is present with us through the words of the Bible, the music that we sing, the nature and beauty of this universe, and the people who love us. For us, the f to fully feel the magnificent work of forgiveness in our lives, we have to, have to go through the two-way process of forgiving others and forgiving ourselves. Take these words and blessings because you and you and you and you and you are a beacon of hope. Forgive others because they are worth it and so are you. Amen, amen. Um, I also wanted to uh, lift up a prayer of gratitude um, for the hard work of our church house IT committee over the last couple of weeks. Many of you heard our computer was smitten with a lightning bolt, um, and so that has now been, been restored. We have working computers again, and Steve Washak, particularly, we thank you for your work in um, getting us a new phone system, and for all of you who voted yay to funding that, um, we have new phones, and Al Lindroth also has made it his full-time job to help install that, so um, it's really been a, um, a great gift to our congregation. And that said, user error is still a high possibility, so if you have called and left me a voicemail and I don't respond, please call back. I may misuse the beautiful new system that we have, so um, we hope it'll all work. And um, finally, a great um, prayer of joy and thanksgiving for Haley's presence with us. She did such a wonderful job. Yay. It was a great gift to me because um, we were celebrating, in my family, two weddings yesterday. Um, one was for Jacob's friend Bobby and his wife Tiffany, uh, who were married at St. Peter's Church in Danbury. That was a great occasion. And then in the afternoon, I got to do a wedding for Tom Young and Ed Season um, at, uh, Anth at Anthony's Lake Club. So uh, it was a full day, so I'm particularly grateful to have a guest preacher today, so newly back from vacation with two weddings yesterday. But we celebrate with those um, families, with their, with their new marriages, and also for Pastor um, Jen and her opportunity to be on vacation, and for all of our, uh, a prayer of gratitude, for all of our wonderful, um, church school teachers over the summer who put together this amazing program and our school teachers who will soon be going back to classes. So I said at the first service, I don't know whether it's a joy or a concern that some of you are going back to school very soon, but whatever it is, we celebrate slash grieve with you. Okay. <laughs> so I know you probably brought your own prayers with you. So are there other, yes? Patsy and Tony autumn. for autumn. And a prayer of thanksgiving for Joey who folded our bulletins. Yeah, that was great. Yes. I uh, thank God for the lyrics time like an ever rolling stream bears all its bundles. Uh, this week I lost my aunt Sue and two friends, Lisa Smith Cooper and Erin Hassan for Sunday at the Wow. So sorry for your losses. Yes. For a sister in law, Kathy. So this is a, our refugee family, Ahmed and Wedjen. Um, they were from Iraq. They, because of the travel ban, they can't go there. So her parents are ailing, and they have been able to get transported to Turkey so she could travel to Turkey. She's now a citizen. Um, so um, yeah, our prayers for her and for her mother-in-law, who T Tahira, yeah, who's traveling with her. Yeah, it's very scary times. Yes. For John and Kate, yes. For John and Sophie. John and Sophie, yes. For Jerry. Jerry. Yes. Well, we are back to last night. Could you please send the congregation Aww. for all the support that they have contributed? Could you please continue to send it? I was 
so sorry I didn't get to speak with her. She was on the back row when she was here visiting, and I was so glad she was able to make it up here and to be in worship. So Margita is in cancer treatment in Florida. So um, she gives her thank yous to all of us for praying. Yeah. Alice and Elizabeth. Alice and Elizabeth. Well, okay, so we're going to pray for Tina's mother, Mary, but especially for Tina, who is giving her care. Yeah. For Rosie. For Rosie. For all the college students, whether they're right. back to college or off to college for the first time in their senior year. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of our seniors going off to college. I was a prayer of gratitude that Leela got a dorm room for fall. Yay, last minute save. That was great. Yes. <laughs> Anybody else? Well, then let us... Um, let us unite our hearts now in a time of prayer. Holy and gracious God, truly your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. So we ask you for help today in receiving truly your amazing and abundant grace, the gift of your tender mercies that you offer us day by day. We ask that you help us to release all of our worries and fears and guilts to you. Your world is broken in so many ways, and especially we see in the world so much anger and hatred and violence. We pray that your spirit of peace may be spread throughout this world. We ask that you help us to be Christ bearers with our lives, bringing the gift of your forgiveness to all who need it. Create in us clean hearts, we pray, and put new and right spirits within us. Help us to receive each new day as a gift from you. Help us to breathe in deeply of your Holy Spirit, that spirit of calm and grace and peace when we need you the most. Help us, we pray, to accept the freedom of new life in Jesus Christ, in whose name we offer this and all of our prayers. Amen. So it's my privilege to share with you today one of the reasons that I love my church. Um, I love our church because stewardship season in our church, which is in January and February, is one of my favorite times of the year where we get to talk more and learn more about our giving to the church. And I'm so grateful to you on that committee for lifting up how much our church does with the um, money that we put in the offering plates here. They don't just all stay here, those gifts. They go to support the wider church, including our Fairfield East Association, which helps to um, hold the standing of all of us who are in ministry together and um, who will be mentoring um, Haley on her um, path through seminary. Our committee on ministry, uh, church and ministry, will be helping her through that process along with me. So know that what you give here today um, does make a great difference in the world. So let us give with joyful hearts.
pray with me. Help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both our money and our lives, that we might make a difference in this world. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life so we know life in all its fullness. Use our gifts towards your mission and purpose. Amen. And now, as we have been blessed by Jesus' love and Christ's peace among us, I invite you to pass that peace to your neighbors here in these pews, but especially out in the world. Go in peace. Amen. 